This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today I'm pleased to have Jimmy Urine and Lindsay of Mindless Self Indulgence. Hey! Hello, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Are you feeling okay? Uh, yeah, I'm good. How has the tour been for you guys so far, and what is the fan reaction? It is fantastic, let me tell you. When you did your first solo album, at what point did you decide that that was going to evolve into what became Mindless Self-Indulgence, the band? There was no, I never really was in any other ever. bands. I was always just a kid in my basement with like, you know, stuff like that. And then the next thing was just to kind of put a band together. And I figured I'd want to do it with my friends, as I don't really like musician types, you know, like, Hey man, you know, I saw your ad in the paper. I play guitar. Uh, so, you know, I found friends who could, you know, play instruments. And, and, it, and it's, uh, it's helpful for lots of reasons. One, I found friends who were very artistic and everybody's very opinionated and knows like a lot of stuff that they like so it becomes more of an art project than less of a band which is fun and plus when you're hanging out with your friends it's fun on the road it's not like some dude there's some sketchy dude who plays guitar you know doing coke off the front of the the bus there's just everybody's like watching movies or doing stuff like that sort of. What inspired the title of your new album, If? That's sort of a double thing. On, on a sort of a graphic art tip, I was really getting sick of the sort of the long name thing. We had done the long name thing forever. You know, Frankenstein Girls was even saying it's sexy and you'll rebuild anything. And, and so I wanted to do something. I wanted something that was a little more compact. And it, it was just a nice word because it's so complicated but so small, you know, and has there's so many variables, you know. You can put it in everything. It's sort of a, a an, an attaching word, you know. So, uh, and that's kind of where our headspace is at at that point, you know, sort of a think, we're one of those bands where it's like, you know, think for yourselves, like we don't want to really tell you what to think, you know, you, you don't just do what you want to do, like we do what we want to do, and so if kind of says something about that. So many of the kids out there today were saying, you know, I love mindless self-indulgence because they don't give a f What, where does that come from, and is there any moral compass at all? Uh, no, and the, the thing that I, I always found very interesting is, is I think, it, uh, I mean, we're smart people and we're and we're nice people, but there's also a. Uh, uh, I think the, the I don't give a fuck. It really just is completely across the board. I think people think sometimes that I don't give a fuck means like, oh, you're gonna kill everybody and break stuff and eat your own shit. But sometimes I don't give a fuck is no, I'm not gonna do that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna also, do whatever we want. Yeah, and it kind of means that you know we don't take ourselves that seriously. Yeah. A lot of bands today, you know, it's it's very serious and everything's mm -hmm. got to be you know some huge message emotional project, or something yeah, yeah. And, and we just have a lot of fun and you know we're the type of band that will slip and fall on stage and get back up and laugh <laughs> yeah and it, it it's fun yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good old time now that you're having even more su success than before do you still want to micromanage your career or are you okay with let giving handing it off to somebody else uh, no, I mean, we, we're very control-oriented, I mean, it's especially on a creative tip, and we've always been, and we've all, we always have a lot of creative control, and, and that's always been uh, such a great thing, because we can be like, okay, we're going to make, you know, the, the stage show's going to be like this, and these songs are going to be like that, and, and I mean, I always get pissed off when I see a band don't even use their record cover, I'm like, you've got a, you could be an artist or not an artist, you've got a blank canvas there, man, you can do whatever the hell you want, you want to do a big statement, do a big statement, you want to just do some swash of art or something, you know, something graphic and do that. And people, a lot of people just sort of just throw it to the record company and they just go, picture the band, eh, you know. And you can do so much with it and have a good time, so. Well, you guys are true artists. I mean, didn't you go to art school, Lindsay? Okay, we, we all, we we all, all did. did in some form or another. Mm -hmm. Some of us graduated, some of us didn't. <laughs> but I actually didn't either. You didn't? No. <laughs> You would have school drop out. True. Actually, you guys actually have graduated from art school because you're living the dream right now. This is just our thesis, a very long thesis. Exactly. It's like an eight year thesis. That's true. <laughs> we'll be done with it soon, and then we get to go to our uh, graduate class. Now, since you brought up the album cover art, Jonan Vasquez. How hands on were you with well, Jonan? Here's the thing I mean, when we do stuff, regardless of whether we do our own graphic thoughts or not, we, you know, we're, there's definitely going to be a thought of who we want to get to do it. So with Jonan, you know, originally we wanted to get him to do something like a poster, and this is a while ago, and he ended up wanting to direct a video, and he did the Shut Me Up video for the last record, and we just sort of went, go willy-nilly, you know, and he did this crazy thing that was very Invader Zim ish and kind of cool. And then this time around, I, I just wanted like artwork, so we were just like, the only parameters we really gave him was we need a back cover, a front cover, uh, you know, and, and a shot of the band, uh, something for the inside, something for the DVD. And then, you know, he just drew up all these things and sent it to us, and then we just sort of 
you know, our, our man Jordan Haley, who's our, our designer guy, help you know puts it together, and just so that there's differences. We like giving a lot, you know, of product, and you know, if you're gonna get a clean version, you get an extra track, you get some different artwork. You get a regular version, you get an extra track, different artwork. You get a deluxe version, you get all this stuff, you know, the Joan of Aspen bizarre little comic books and lyrics, you know. So that way everybody has product, something, you know, instead of just, you know, because you can download my freaking record if you want, you know, it's, it's that simple now, so why would you go buy it? Well, there's a reason to go buy it. It's a beautiful artwork. You mentioned clean version of your album. Do you feel like you're being forced to bow the knee to authority by having a clean version? Mm -hmm. And do you feel that the music may artistically suffer from that? Actually, the funny thing is, is it doesn't, because I don't, I don't change the lyrics. I don't go in and, and say like, stupid mother sucker, you know, or anything <laughs> stupid like that. Although oh, maybe man. I should have. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, I'll just we'll just pull the word out, and there's so much cacophony music there that it just sort of fills the space. So I'm never like offended when I hear like F you know the thing gone. And you know you need clean versions to play on radio stations, and you know some 11 year old wants to buy it, and mom wants to get it for him, sure, and he gets a different artwork and maybe an extra track that some other kid doesn't get, and that's that, you know. And if if he wants to creep out and get the the, the real deal, he'll he'll get it eventually. I never wanted to dance came in at number one. I know. Crazy. Okay, and your album debuted at number twenty seven, I believe, on Billboard. Yeah, top forty, man. Mm -hmm. Yo, the mainstream want to jump on the mindless up indulgence train. They can jump on it. Just gotta buy a ticket in cash. How does that make you feel? Well, it's odd because I think it was such a bum rush. Like we've been working. Yeah. It was really cool because yesterday I went and I looked at the Rolling Stone and I immediately went to the back and our, our little name was, was on there. Oh. I got jazzed. I did. Man, I got to mm -hmm. jazz that. I yeah. didn't think about even doing that. Yeah. Smart. I didn't one. buy it, but I looked <laughs> at it. <laughs> we'll steal it later. We'll send someone to 7-Eleven again. It must be exciting. Well, it just sort of creeps in. I mean, we're always working, which is kind of a, an odd thing. I mean, everybody was like, we, you know, we, we did uh, like all the Project Rev, and we were in in the in Australia and Japan, and then we did the UK, and then we we literally went from the UK and got off the plane and got on this bus and started the American run. And the, the day the record came out, everybody's like, oh, congratulations, your record came out. And for us, it's like a kid who went to summer school all summer, and now it's the first day of school. So to me, it's just like another day. It's like I got to start like a huge American run and then go back to the UK. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not that like, show me the money. <laughs> then, then I'll be convinced that oh, really? it, then I went to number one. This has been built over years of work. Well, it's nice because it's been built without the mainstream. Yeah. That was nice. It's been built on word of mouth. So, you know, we never had to worry about like, you know, we never really said, well, let's write that real that big ballad for radio and oh let's change this for radio and let's change that for MTV and you know uh, you know if they want to play us they can play us and that's just the thing we kind of got to this point on our own doing our own thing now if people want to kind of jump on board great they get to jump on board the way we want them Lindsay this is the first album that you you and Kitty have sang on yeah do you feel this is a progression in the mindless self-indulgent sound well kind of because Kitty's actually a really really good singer and oh, we all man. have fantasies of her being Phil Collins and wearing a headset <laughs> yeah. I on the other <laughs> hand <laughs> am a terrible terrible singer but that's subjective uh, yeah well it's kind of my dream to be a singer but I, I just can't do it and I also have terrible microphone phobia or whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> and I get really, really, really nervous. So in order for me to do it, I, I had had a couple cocktails. <laughs> and Tell me about the ingenious way that you created the song Mark David Chapman. Yeah, I would tell you how I did it. Uh, basically, uh, it was a voting situation. I mean, uh, a lot of times I get kind of bored writing stuff. So I figured I'd like to write with everybody. Like, how could I write with every single kid and every single fan? So I kind of come up with this idea of having a vote on specific parts of the song. So I would say, like, for instance, I would put up a question, what should I start writing this song with? Should it be a guitar, should it be a synthesizer, or a drum machine? And I'd put the question up on, like, our MySpace for a while, and then they would vote, and let's say they said synthesizer, and then I would stick with the parameters exactly, and I would only write on the synth, even if it was, like, you know, it would force me to think a certain way. Same thing with, you know, other questions later on, like, should I use this file of samples or that file of samples? And even if this file that they picked was crap, I'd have to make it work somehow. And I didn't go off the beaten path at all. Like if they said, you know, you do A, I'm, I was doing A. If they said do B, I do B. And it was actually, it, it came out really good com considering the bizarre nature of it. And I definitely would love to do it again. I'd love to do a whole record like it. The only problem is it takes, like every week was a whole, I had to wait a whole week in between each bit. So the damn song took like almost a month or so to, just to write it. What is your mission statement? I have a mission statement, I guess. It's the anti-message. Yeah, the, our message is the anti-message, you know. Think for yourself. We're not here to save you or tell you what to do. We're just here to we're just show, here to show up and take your money. You know? <laughs>
and your job is to dance. Mm -hmm. How fun was it working with your wife, Chantal, on, on the album? And she's featured on three songs, yeah. so you must have had a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a real good time. I mean, you know, especially with the duet, because uh, the duet, we picked the duet, of course, that was the one about, uh, about me being impotent with sex and stuff like <laughs> that. So that, I think, is fun, because it's, it's not quite the duet like I'd had the time of my life, you know, but it's it's close. It's very, and she's a fun girl, a funny girl. I can't wait for your kids to hear it. Oh, I know. Well, I, well like I told you, man, when I have kids, they're never going to see this. Yeah. This is going to be over, and I'm going to hide in the closet like some kind of weird Superman thing, and then they like, open it thing. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Drake is open. Yeah. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with Jimmy Urine and Lindsay of Mindless Self-Indulgence. Signing off. <laughs>